Good morning, West USA. Welcome to another Tuesday morning edition of our weekly West USA Realty Ooh. webinar. Man, April 25th, end of April. Well, the, I thought the first quarter went by fast, but <laughs> my golly. I know. April's I mean, gone. I know. I mean, I had my birthday this month, so now the year's done. I mean, there's yeah. nothing to live for until next year. Well, that's if I'm still for. here next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are broadcasting live as always in the belly of the beast, better known as the corporate office at West USA Realty. As, to, uh, as always, um, man, we've been really busy on this. Uh, some a lot of great, great content. And uh, you guys have been emailing us, wanting copies of the slides and have questions and whatever the case is. Always feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com and we will get any and everything that you need to you as soon as possible. Uh, what we got on tap today, of course, our operations officer, Todd Menard's here to give us a look at the numbers. The Bookspan Baker team and Mick Menard is here to give us a little mortgage minute. And then uh, we're going to skip the three pack today because um, this has been something that everybody's been asking for. And uh, we have finally delivered listing packets or listing presentations, awesome. I should say. So we got Scott Colbert here is going to take us through it and then let you know where you can learn more at the different office meetings that come up and then of course uh don't do that with bob so we got a lot to cover todd so let's get rocking and rolling and uh what's going on in the market what do you think well mike a little reset we got 67 days on market for closed inventory uh month supply still well under three percent at 2.56 absorption rate which is the reciprocal number we're just eating up this inventory and not replacing it average list price is at 525 828 and average sale price came in at 291 854 and the list price to sale price retention so the amount that the seller typically negotiates from the list price at the time the offer was written is 97.3 percent uh, looking at inventory, which is obviously the issue. Uh, you know, Riz Media just came out with their rankings. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Real Trends, which is another reporting, just came out with their rankings. Uh, you know, everybody's, but th they also are talking about the market and and inventory is the issue across America today. So 19,664 is what we are at right now is active inventory. Uh, pending is sitting at 64,88. As I said, uh, you know, got to anticipate that's getting to seven pretty quickly. Then seven meaning 7,000. Close units at 51,29. Again, we, last week, Mike, we were we were behind the curve. Um, this week, we're now seven percent ahead of the curve, which basically means over this week we recovered eleven percent, wow. um, which is huge. Uh, Fifty-one twenty-nine is where we're sitting. So, what does it mean inventory-wise? Well, you know, we only took twenty-one hundred and seventy listings this past week. Uh, which is average. I mean, that's about, if you've been following along, that's about average. Average inventory is uh, for active is about 120.4 days. That's continuing to tick down. Slide your eyes across. Days on market for closed is sitting at 67. Um, and again, that's continuing to tick down, which just, you know, obviously all these things are indicative of the summer buying market. Taking a look at the price ranges under 500,000 still comprises about 73% of the market and is sitting at 86.13 days on market. The active inventory between 500,000 and a million is 17% of the overall uh, active inventory in MLS, and that's averaging 126, almost 127 days on market. And of course, those million dollar and up properties, uh, you know, sitting at 9% of the market and also uh, about 225 days. So that's quite a jump. Yeah. Last week, I went on a uh, open house tour or a broker tour of a $2.5 million property in Litchfield Park uh, listed by the Minix. And I'm like, how can there be a house worth $2.5 million? I'm telling you what, it was a bad mamma jamma. The, the shiz, right? <laughs> so I put in an offer for 150 k just so I can say that I'm making offers on multi-million multi dollar properties. <laughs> That's awesome. Taking, taking a look at the spreadsheet and how it all breaks down week over week, which is in the yellow. Because um, she's got to present the offer. Oh, well, there you go. Well, unless, of course, the seller said that they won't accept offers under, but yeah, she's she got to show you that. She's going to smack me around. Uh, the blue shows the uh, month over months and a little bit of year over year. So looking across the board, 2170, as you can see, 2179 last week. It's all pretty consistent. Uh, slide your eyes across. You know, again, March, we did about 12,000 units. Uh, and again, in February was uh, 9,900 units. So again, the market's heating up. We are taking more inventory, take more listings, but we're just eating it up faster. Um, as you can see here under the pending uh, and, and, and uh, uh, contingent sales, 
and under contract accepting backup offers. You know, 6488, 66 is where we were last week. So we slowed just a little bit uh, in, in, in putting properties into the MLS. Uh, but that also is sh saying that that's because they're also closing. So they come off of pending when they close. So that's why that number fluctuates. So over the last week, no matter how much we gained, as I indicated earlier, about 10%, 11%, um, we also closed a number of properties, which obviously in this particular case, uh, ate that inventory up so uh, or, or disposed of that uh, those numbers under pending looking at close because you know again this is kind of what we use as our indicator uh, we're up to uh, back up to 7.3 we're at 47 49 uh, 4779 last week uh, which was below the market um, so we'll still continue to see where we finish but we're you know Two thirds, three three quarters of the way through the month, um, we need that number to get up, you know, close to nine thousand. So, you know, and it does. I mean, usually the end of the month is when we close inventory. So, uh, taking a look at the uh, statistics down at the bottom, two point five six, we slid from two point seven eight average month supply down another eight percent. Uh, you know, the market's heating up and that's not good because that typically is pushing the prices higher as we talked about. Um, and we, we've got to replace that inventory. But how it affects us is, you know, this past week, you know, we've been talking about how the uh, average list price and the average sale prices have just been going up and up and up and up and 11% gain over the last, you know, uh, uh, two and a half months uh, in, in sale price. Uh, you know, we did have a little bit of a, of, of a, uh, a reset here. We're down to 291 versus 295. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's good to see in some instances, uh, not so much for the sellers. Uh, days on inventory is continuing to tick down from 132 days on market uh, a year ago, uh, down to 126 days on market last month, down to 120 days on market this month. Um, so you can see that that this is what's happening. Uh, but here's some news. I want to I want to end I want to end my presentation with you today um, on you know with, with some exciting news. And uh, Riz Media, which is one of the largest national reporting uh, ranking instruments, just came out yesterday with the annual rankings for 2016 production, which was last year and we are so honored that our agents are such top performers uh, that we were able to increase our ranking uh, and come from number 81 uh, last year to number 39 this year. This is of all brokerage firms. I'm talking about the big, you know, Ascendant Corporation, Realogy, you know, and, and some of the large franchising companies that you will know their name if we're mentioned. Um, the big thing here is West USA is continuing to be in a leader amongst those big dogs and and we're and, you know and honestly you can say we're a big company but we're really not a big company we only have like 2200 agents and yet you know we're competing with with companies that have significantly more um and, and so congratulations to all of our agents and thank you so very much for picking west usa as your services and support company um, to help you with your business and help you become you know do even greater i hope you utilize all the resources and tools um such as the tool that scott and mike are, and i will talk about in a little bit uh, that listing presentation because this is your company that you know we, if you need something you just pick up the phone you can call you can talk to any one of us you can talk to myself you can talk to Clint the president of the company I mean nobody we all <laughs> we're here for you and that's what this is all about but thank you very much 3.346 billion dollars in business last year 19,635 closed transactions we have 17 branches I don't know where they came up with a 2,662 agents but uh, you know, just a just a wonderful job. So if you're out there talking to clients in the marketplace, tell them we are 15th highest production brokerage in the nation. You can see it right there. Nineteen thousand six hundred thirty eight transactions. Um, the, the reason we're 39th, just real quick, is because uh, our 3.3 billion put us at 30 at 39 uh, because in some instances, our average sale price is less than in other marketplaces. Um, so that's why we don't have the volume, even though we have the production. So it's very important to understand dollar sales are volume and unit sales are production. And you are the 15th number 15 highest production 
uh, you work with us uh, uh, at West USA, sorry about that, uh, in the country. Uh, congratulations. What an honor. Absolutely. And uh, McDonald's came out with their rankings. Um, I <laughs> received the number one award for mentioning McDonald's the most in an hour-long weekly webinar. So so I'm pretty proud <laughs> of, of that. And that is a hashtag McRib. <laughs> hashtag McRib. <laughs> hashtag when is the McRib coming? So speaking of McRib, we've got Mick Bernard here uh, with the Bookspan Baker team at Fairway Independent Mortgage <laughs> Corporation. So let's jump right into uh, the market update and and uh, give us a little inside scoop on what's going on with rates. I think I'd rather talk about Mick Rib or the Mick Bernard. Yeah, the Mick <laughs> Bernard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rates are hanging in there. Rates are looking pretty good still. You know, uh, you see conventionals are down low fours. Of course, if you're paying points, you're paying, you're getting a rate in the three still, which is, you know, rates are better than they were a month ago. And so we're definitely headed in the right direction there. So um, what do we want to talk about today for a little presentation is, sorry, those that might be a little small to see on that slide. My apologies for that, but hopefully you guys can maybe save it and zoom in. We want to talk about the pre-qualification form. I get a lot of questions on this. Um, I did a little presentation to some of your some of the West USA agents this past week and got a tons tons of questions. And so apparently, I don't know if some of the newer agents or some of the experienced agents don't be afraid of this form. This form will help you control your keep control of your transaction and. Uh, just make note of where the box, what boxes are checked, what lines are filled in. You'll note that on this one, it looks like it's not filled in at all because it is actually issued a pre-qualification. So the top few lines are blank because did you know that you could actually receive a pre-qualification form by a buyer who has not even talked to a lender? You just simply check the box. I haven't spoken to a lender and you sign it and you present it. So my suggestion would be don't accept one like that. But yeah, yeah, that's the box that you want. You want to if you see that what, what line uh, three, if that's checked, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't accept that uh, contract. Exactly. And so a lot of times you'll get somebody that wants to look at places you want to show them and they'll tell you they're pre they're pre qual already by somebody else. I would really encourage you to force their hand and have them show you the pre-qualification form. Um, and then when it is filled out, you want to make note, you know, are they are they required to sell a property? You know, are they looking for seller concessions? You want to make sure that you're 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 acknowledging that. Then also when we get down to what kind of documentation, you know, in the, in the middle of your form there, um, you'll notice that this particular form is checked NA, 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 no, 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 but the issue, but, we, but it's still issued. And so that's another thing that you want to be careful about. This one, um, again, is just an example, but this particular borrower had their credit checked. Their credit was acceptable. They discussed payments with the lender and that's it. Right? No documentation has been submitted. However, the form is still issued. And so make sure that you're re reviewing the form, seeing which ones, are, which boxes are checked, yes, no, or not applicable. Um, and then here's my suggestion. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call the lender, right? Especially for the listing agent. And you have another agent presenting this to you and you're not comfortable or you're not you just want to make sure that the boxes are checked and everything is accurate. You want to make sure that yeah. you're asking questions. We get, I get calls all the time from agents that want to um, understand what exactly we have done for the buyer. Uh, have we run it through DU? Has an underwriter seen it? Who's If we checked yes, that we've reviewed the documents, who actually has reviewed the documents? Those are great questions to ask because is it just a quick, hey, it's Sunday morning, send me your pay stub, it looks good, or did your lender collect all of the documentation that the underwriter is going to request in the end and have a pre-underwriter look at it in the beginning? If you do, then you're going to have a lot less problems in the end. Yeah. And one of the other things you can do too is this is part of the leverage when you're on a listing appointment and, and you're talking with the sellers and, and what what are some of the things that you do that are different than the average agent? And this is a selling point. I, I can assure you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that every offer that comes in, I'm going to take a look at this and I'm going to call the lender. Before right. I present an offer to you, I'm going to have a conversation with the lender and and determine who's who's probably the strongest buyer and all. Exactly. That's what I would really encourage you to do. Find out what their process is. Exactly. Again, who refu who review the documents to make sure that you're picking the best offer for for your seller. No question about that. And I think that's one of the books Ben Baker differences is we have detailed underwriting up front. We're willing to invest the time. We have a trained underwriter that reviews the tax returns, reviews the pay stubs, determines if we can use somebody's overtime. Uh, you know, or sometimes there's a gap in employment. How long does that person need to be back to work before we can actually count their income? 
uh, we double check all that up front to make sure when we do issue that prequal, it's solid and you know your deal's going to close. All right, Mick Bernard here from the Bookspan Baker team. Appreciate you. Uh, boy, hold on. I've got a. All right, I've had a little problem there. I was meant to, to remove the three pack. So that's a little tease for next week. <laughs> a little tease for next week. I right, appreciate you joining us. Okay. All right. Uh, just Actually, just one announcement, most important announcement of all. If you're looking for your CE hours, if you're like me, you wait for the last second to do them online or or show up to the School of Real Estate for the, at the last week uh, and get all your hours done, uh, we're going to solve the problem for you. Ooh. We're going on a seven-day Mexican Riviera cruise. Uh, while on the cruise ship, you get to eat and drink and be merry and and do all of the things that you want to do and you also can take your ce classes so it's going to be uh and here's the deal um in the first week of may um these prices these are locked prices so if you wait till the middle of may or afterwards you can still go on the cruise but we can't guarantee uh these rates so you want to go on cruiseforcredit.com i'm going i'm looking forward to uh a great time. I'm going to try to make it to the CE classes. No guarantees. I, I'm planning on doing a lot of eating and, and and so forth. So I want you, everybody to make notes of these days. And I'm, this slide's going to come up on the very end as well. And we have been, uh, for a very, very long time, putting together a quality listing presentation that you can customize as well as just have a quick template that you can download or print and you can take with you on your listing presentations. So this is going to be a very, very powerful tool. It's amazing looking and it's got some amazing features. And so we're bringing on Scott Colbert, our VP of sales, who's really been the most instrumental person on putting this together. So uh, Scott, I want to say thank you for doing it so that I didn't have to do yeah, it. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Obviously, it was a collaborative effort of a lot of a lot of key players here at West USA. All right. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand this over to you and um, I'm just going to let you uh, take us through it and uh, and just uh, tell us about it and and what's in it. Yep, sounds great. I tell you, I, I can't resist, though, to go back just a minute when you talk about the continuing uh, education credits. I, th I thought CE meant continuous eating. Is that what that means? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Right, so I'm just double yeah, checking. Yeah. And, I, and I get those done right away. Good, good. Well, you, you'll get your credits in. Well, yeah, we're, we're real excited about the home selling proposal that we've put together here at West USA. And the thing that I want to open up with is that we have two versions. So we have what we call the grab and go version, which is on your dashboard. Ding. Uh, there it is. So, uh, <laughs> so that's thanks, the, thanks for that. You, you're you're you, you've, huh? you've listened to a webinar uh, too. Yes. Uh, I got to be my own dinger. But anyway, um, yeah, the grab and go version is on your dashboard. It is on uh, your quick links drop down uh, that's on there as we speak. That's the grab and go version. It does open up into a PowerPoint. It does print on an eight and a half by eleven. Uh, so it's a, it's a great presentation. There's another version that's customizable. So like what you see right here, the home selling proposal uh, presented by West USA Realty Inc. I'll show you a slide a little bit later on that's going to show you uh, that you can actually customize that to be presented by your name and, and who the client is, your uh, home office address and, and things like that. So some of the things that this is going to cover, now we're going to just go into kind of the blanket version and then you'll see the customizable slides at the end. But remember, there's two different versions. Uh, your managers will have those. Uh, what this is actually going to cover is identifying your goals, marketing your property, establishing a pricing strategy. And I like to say strategy because it, there is a strategy for pricing. You know, if you want a home sold in 15 minutes or 15 months, there's a number for that, right? <laughs> so uh, preparing your property for sale and a little bit about who we are. Um, this is really, again, great. This is a good information to be used as a pre-listing presentation package to be emailed to the seller, to be delivered to the seller. So you're not actually taking the time to go over this, you know, for an hour uh, when you really should be focusing on, you know, what will I get for my home? How long will it take? And what do you charge? That's what they want to know. So identifying your goals, that's just kind of our cover page going right into your needs come first, a little bit of an explanation there. Um, just explains, you know, to the consumer what we're doing to look out for their needs uh, and, and what they're looking for there. And like I said, we're going to just kind of rip through it because it's just an overview. Uh, understanding your expectations. And again, I want to emphasize you can get in there and customize this. This is really meant to be just a template for anything that you want to do to change that and, and really 10 plus it. Appreciating your property, um, you know, it gives them uh, on, on conversation about, you know, what do you feel the most appealing features of this property are and, and some things like that. It really guides the the process so you can really get them to, you know, get to understand a little bit about how they feel about their property, what concerns they feel they may have, and setting the right expectations there. 
Uh, so that's really an opportunity for them to brag. Uh, from start to finish, uh, goes into the pre-listing process all the way through the offer process. So we find that a lot of folks really don't understand the process. You hear it a lot where people say, I gave my listing to, or, you know, so-and-so's got it on MLS. That's not what listing property is. Um, you know, putting it on MLS and crossing your fingers is not a strategy, and that's not how we sell homes. Uh, so this gives them a little bit of an overview. Yeah, and one, of, one of the complaints that a lot of sellers make is, uh, you know, I meet with my agent, I see my agent, my agent treats me really wonderful, take the listing, and then I don't hear from them. Yeah. And then I might get an email, hey, here's an offer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a list, Sign it. <laughs> listing goes like a drive-by listing, right? Drive-by shooting. But uh, you'll see there, uh, so the goal, sell your home for the highest price in the shortest period of time. That's generally the goal, right? Highest price may not be what they're thinking it is, but the market will tell you what that highest price is. So what's the home selling process? Initial consultation, uh, design and implement a marketing plan. Uh, again, there's uh, opportunities here for you to put in a specific marketing plan. I do have a template in there for a plan of action. Uh, I recommend even if you are going to use the grab and go version, read that plan, make sure that you do the things that are in that plan. Uh, that could be a very interesting conversation for you and the seller if you're not doing those things. Uh, more into the home selling process about reviewing the offer, uh, reaching an agreement with the buyer. What does that look like? The settlement process and your service after the sale, uh, which is really, really important. So who's involved in a real estate transaction? And this really kind of gives them the big picture. Uh, really, who's involved? It's not just about you sticking it on the MLS. You've got home inspectors, insurance, staging companies, escrow, lenders, underwriters, appraisers. You know, there's many, many key players in the successful uh, listing and selling of a property. So this kind of gives them that outline just a little bit. And then we go into marketing your property. So some really fancy uh, artwork there. Of course, those of you that have been with West USA a while and expect nothing less. Uh, the goals of effective marketing. And I just want to point out again, uh, this is a phenomenal marketing piece that our marketing team put together. And, you know, when you talk about marketing someone's property, it kind of makes sense that you market yourself at high level, too. Uh, too. It's kind of like your uh, your interview there for marketing. And I and also say, you know, and, and through this, I mean, before you print this and, and go take it to a seller, you might want to go through it yourself and see yep. what you're committing to. I Absolutely. mean, let's just say that we have some agents and I don't understand why they, they, they come hell or high water. They will not do open houses. Yep. So if you send them something that says you're going to do open right. houses, yeah. so you just got to be careful. You got to know what's in it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think a lot of a uh, listing presentation, whether it's a pre-listing kit or a presentation also has a lot to do with setting expectations with the client. I mean, ultimately when your services are done, you want somebody to look at you and go, wow, you, you meet, met or exceeded all the things you said you were going to do. You're a good realtor. I'm going to refer business to you. Or it's the opposite. Well, the, your presentation showed me all these wonderful things you were going to do, and you only did two of them. Right. You know, exactly. you put my property in the listing, and you said hello. I mean, you know, that that's what you did. So I think it's real important, Mike, uh, from what Mike said, uh, is you've got to read this, and you've got to understand it, or you've got to manipulate it and change it to be what you want it to be. Absolutely right. Yeah, that's, yeah so that's I would just take a, take a just like a, a ballpoint pen and just cross out whatever yeah. you don't want to do and then give it to them. Well, that, that's what you do when, when, <laughs> with, 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 when they want to negotiate your commission down to don't nothing. Do you just take a big marker and say, well, let's mark out pages 15 through 25. <laughs> I don't do that. So, yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Uh, uh, so it talks about effective marketing. Again, you can add some of your own uh, customized marketing there. Uh, obviously, our referral network of agents is, is a great tool there. Uh, a lot of things you can add there as well. Um, the Internet, uh, this really is just kind of leads into the fact that, you know, like most companies, we have uh, a great Internet exposure. However, we do um, we do like to emphasize, you know, the top three, Zillow with 36 million visitors monthly. Trulia with 23 million visitors monthly and Realtor.com with 18 million visitors monthly. Uh, in addition to, you know, the many other uh, websites that this is hitting, those are some key points to, to include there and let folks know that, you know, uh, exposure will not be an issue. Uh, talks about important ways to promote your property. Um, some good things to look over there. So I really encourage you guys to download this and take a good look at it. Establishing a pricing strategy, like I said, that, that's exactly what it is. It's it, depending on if you hit a one or a two on your keyboard when you put in the MLS, you might have an offer in 15 minutes. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, how you price it. <laughs> so what is that st uh, strategy? Understanding the market value, um, you know, location, location, location. You hear that a lot. Um, some other factors that will impact pricing 
and uh, obviously run it, you know, give a good opportunity to educate folks on the difference between, you know, Zillow's estimates, uh, appraised value and market value, because market value is what's going to bring the buyer. Again, more into pricing your home. Um, kind of sets the expectation there a little bit. Talk about solds, actives, and expireds. And I also want to tie into the fact that you'll notice this is not a CMA, uh, that the best tools you're going to have for a CMA are the ones that you're currently using, whether it be uh, RPR, you know, Realtors Property Resource, or Cloud CMA. So it's really an opportunity to tie these in together. And if you were to email this presentation out, you can actually email, you know, the, the presentation from RPR along with this presentation as well. So it really gives them, you know, the full experience. And then you get to show up and list it. Makes it easy. Talks about the dangers of overpricing, timing in weeks. We know that the first few weeks are the most active uh, of any listing on the market. That's when you're going to get the most exposure. Um, that's good to educate them on that. And overpricing equals fewer buyers. So again, this is a pyramid that we've, we've all seen probably dozens and dozens of times where obviously the lower the price, the you know, higher amount of qualified buyers you're going to get looking at your property and a quicker sale. Uh, so that's good to know. Preparing your home to sell. This is where we're going to talk about uh, staging, advantages of staging, and even self-staging. There's a couple examples there. Um, I think Todd is one that uh, found the graphics for a lot of these. Uh, I love the pictures there where it shows a before and after of, st of a staged home. And isn't that interesting? Because it's the same home. It's in the same neighborhood. The square footage didn't change, but it looks significantly better after it's been staged, or in this case, at least cleaned, right? Uh, but it's staged very well, and you're going to bring in... Uh, you know, better offers, in, in my opinion. I think you're going to get people a little more excited about it. Uh, it talks about self-staging your home, uh, general maintenance, mood setters, some house hints, uh, some great stuff there. The basics, you know, cut the lawn, uh, repair any damage, pull the weeds, get rid of the rattlesnakes, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Just going out there. It's part of my service. That's You're a realtor. I'll go get that rattlesnake I'll go for get you. it for you. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about that, but it'd take too long. Yeah, just make sure you got a butterball indoor turkey fry. We'll throw that snake That's right, right in there yeah. and bam. I, yeah, I, I, I won't go into my funny story, but there is a, a funny rattlesnake story. I'm sure we all got them. Uh, more on self-staging a home. Um, just gives them a good idea of what things to, to be aware of. When they're preparing their home for sale, you know, most real estate agents, uh, when they go to presentations, they're so concerned about getting the listing rather than taking the listing. So they're not asking the right kind of questions. And, and a lot of times uh, sellers will say, you know, what improvements do you think I can make to get my home sold? And agents just like to clam up. This is really an opportunity to say, hey, it might be a good idea to clean up that clutter, um, you know, and really let them see what they need to do. Yeah, and I was talking, uh, I was meeting with a lot of our top producers just in mastermind groups, and, and to the one, they say, uh, you know, before they even go over this, I mean, the very first thing you do when you show up is take a tour of the house. Yeah, absolutely. And so that you can write down things and point out things, because because it, it makes you look educated. And that's really what it comes down to. For those of us like you and I who who aren't very smart, it, you know, we need any little trick to make us we look smart. all the help we can get. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, yeah, so this goes more into self-staging because, again, you know, with the resources we have with uh, showing value and some of the great tools like that, we're getting more and more feedback, more so than we used to. And it is interesting when people will say the home just didn't show well, uh, you know, and these are some great. Well, you know, a lot of times people, the agents don't want to hold an open house anymore. It's like, are you going to hold an open house? They go, Those don't work. I'm not holding an open house. I don't need more buyers. I, I'm like, really? What, yeah. what are you talking about? Hold on a second. Let me think about this. So if you give people a comment card when they walk in the door um you know and you get and you stage the home properly when people walk through the home they can take notes and hand it to you at the end you don't have to give them a gift and you don't have to ask them to put their name on it or any of those things um just just get it and then that way you can hand it to the consumer yeah absolutely and, yeah and sometimes it's not even it's it's not about us anyway. No, so so when, you, when you're yeah. talking about talking to a seller and three of their neighbors got their houses listed and their agents are doing open houses and you're the guy who shows up and says, well, I don't do open houses. No matter what your rationale is to, to them in their mind, they're like, well, my neighbor's agent's doing open houses. And so it's one of the things, and this is what I love about our closed Facebook pages that each office has. If you're an agent, and, and I know a lot of agents that do, they just won't do open yeah, houses, but we have a lot of agents in our offices that will hold open houses. So whether you hold an open house or another West USA agent holds an open house, a lot of sellers want open houses. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, you want the most uh, exposure possible. The last thing you want is for your neighbor's 
listing to sell um, and they think it's because of an open house. It was <laughs> it was probably because of the price, right? Yeah. But that's the perception. More into self-staging, there's a checklist there. Uh, it's really just really important to emphasize that. So it goes into showing, uh, you know, what does it look like when the home is going to be shown? Again, sets the expectation. I mean, this this is really designed, this whole presentation is designed to put in writing the things that you may not touch on at your appointment, at your consultation. Because again, the listing presentation really, as you're there, you're there to discuss, you know, what am I going to get? How long is it going to take? And, and what do you charge? Uh, that's what they really want to know. Uh, this really will keep you out of the pocket, you know, where you're not sitting there for an hour and a half. You know, good good luck trying to go over this page by page with a seller and going through a CMA and going through a contract. The response you're going to get is we need to think about it almost every time. You know, it's nice having this delivered the night before, too, by a delivery service or, you know, like I even heard that American Title, if you're using them and you say we recommend using American Title in the uh, in the listing, uh, which you can say, you just can't demand that they do, uh, then uh, they'll actually deliver, the, deliver your uh, listing presentation for you. Absolutely. Yeah, we've actually um, have... I heard from a, a few of the reps there that they would be on board with uh, doing that where they you could actually email this to them uh, along with your RPR. They'll put it in the listing book and actually courier it directly to the consumer where all you have to do is, is follow up, confirm the appointment, overcome the objections and show up and take the listing. Well, I'll make you a deal, Scott. If, if I will guarantee that I will let you come on a listing appointment for my wife and I, as long as it's hand delivered with like Omaha steaks or something like that. It'll get you in the door. I'm as telling as, you. As long as you list the house, no, I'll, no, I'll be happy to do that. No, no, no. I guarantee the appointment. You don't, you you don't deliver the, the the Omaha steaks. You've got to carry those with you because if you give the seller the Omaha steaks, then you're not getting in. You're done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. More about showing your home. Again, uh, there's, uh, there's a checklist there for whether the home is staged and lived in or vacant. Um, so good to know there. Uh, this goes into a little bit about who we are as West USA, uh, and this is where you can add add some things in as well. And I'll show you the customizable slides here at the end. Now, again, the other version that is customizable, it would be customizable along the way. So there's things already that would have been included here that you're not seeing in this version because this is the grab and go version. Uh, so this talks a little bit about the history and the culture. Okay, behind so what West we're USA. looking at right now is the grab and go. This is the grab and go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At the very end, I did put in some slides just to show you what would be included in the other presentation. Uh, about my company, what distinguishes West USA from others? You know, there's there's some verbiage there. Um, you know, if you've got some other stuff we can add to that, we can add to that. Uh, and again, based on the feedback we get, we'll probably do a 2.0 version to this in about six weeks. And then I would say you can count on this being updated and upgraded on an annual basis. Let's see. Um, this talks about you, you know, how can you help them with communication and all the things that you pledge to do. Again, on the other version, it's a little more together. Uh, your plan of action. Now, again, this is specific to what I used to use in the field. Uh, it's literally copied and pasted from the marketing materials that I would take to a listing presentation. So I'd be very careful to read this and make sure that if you're going to use this and you're welcome to make sure you do this. Uh, you'll notice there towards the bottom, it says prospect three to four hours per day and talk to 25 to 30 people per day looking for potential buyers for your home. If you don't do that, here's what I recommend. Leave it in there and do it. <laughs> That'd be even better, wouldn't it? <laughs> so uh, anyway, those are the objectives. Talks about the proactive approach. And then it goes into uh, some important service items to make your sale less stressful. Uh, again, feel free to edit that any way that you want. Some good stuff there. And then at the end, it talks about your commitment, uh, what you'll do to communicate with them in a timely and efficient manner, identifying your needs. Uh, it's always a good idea to stay in constant communication with a seller. We generally recommend about once a week. So when you say edit it, how, how can we edit this? Well, you can actually edit it. I'm going to show you in the next slide here okay. where you can actually go, for example, in the customizable version, this slide would be somewhere uh, in the middle there. Um, I just, for, for training purposes, we just kind of put it at the end here, but it would be in the middle there and you can move it around wherever you want, but you could actually take that handsome guy's picture out of there, put yours in there. Um, you would actually have to remove the verbiage, you know, where it says your picture here. Um, but put your photo in there. Uh, also some things you might like to know about me, you know, an active member of the community. You can put some examples in there. An experienced sales professional, put some examples in there. Maybe it's, uh, you know, some of you award winners that want to put uh, that on there and, and 
put some different logos and, and things like that. You can really do anything you want. This is really just a place setter to show you where you can customize that about yourself. Uh, also, in addition to that, we've got like a testimonials page. So this is where you can go. And, and again, you can take, you know, Todd's handsome face out of there and put your testimonials in there. He's, Todd's got a great example of a screenshot there of a testimonial. Uh, that's a great idea because it's visual. You know, people get kind of lost in just reading all the all the text. Uh, having something visual like that is great. Have your own testimonials in there. Um, if you don't currently have testimonials, you know, maybe some character references uh, from, you know, uh, one of our brokers or other agents that you've worked with. Things or like just that. make them up. Yeah. That's the, go, go on I've Shutterstock, get some images of some yeah. people. Just, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've seen I've seen people do that. I've actually seen an agent that actually wrote his own testimonials and you can tell that he wrote them because they were the same grammatical errors in every testimonial. And I thought, wow, that's that's all awesome. outstanding. I wish I had thought of that. Yeah. You know, and the big thing, too, is <laughs> is uh, get your clients at the end of your uh, of your your service. Get the client to go to Zillow and fill out the testimonial. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really recommend on your testimonials that you've got. um you know, a, a, a source for them, you know, so if you are getting your, your Zillow profile that, you know, your free version where you can actually, when you close a sale, you can actually go and, uh, and request that testimonial. You can copy and paste those testimonials in here, but then you can let folks know that you can actually, they can reference and verify your testimonials because that's extremely important. I mean, there's, there's really a lot of power in, uh, in getting that done. So, um, Looking at the next slide, you'll notice again the other way that this is customized. And this doesn't look like it's customized, but you'll notice at the bottom where it says your agent. Uh, if you are using the customized version, make sure in the brackets there, you know, you've got your picture, your name, uh, some information, some things like that. So, again, what does it look like now to go revisit using this presentation properly? And again, the proper way to do it, you know, and I know a lot of folks, they're going to fight the fight this a little bit. They're going to want to take this with them on a flipboard or something like that. And they're going to want to go there and, and sit down and, and talk about it for, you know, uh, an hour. Uh, you're really going to lose the seller uh, in this. You know, this is the kind of stuff that they can read beforehand. It's kind of couch material. So, so you're going to you're gonna, when you're teaching this, I would imagine as you're going around, it's not really going out just to show people this, but it is showing them, showing them, getting them familiar with it, how to make changes to it. Exactly. But you're also going to I would imagine you'll probably have even if it's a handout, um, you know, something that outlines the presentation process, you know, that just says, hey, listen, like Mike said, you know, the first thing you should do after you say hello is listen, before we get going here, could you show me the home as you would as you can envision me showing it to your buyer? Absolutely. You know, and they, they say, yes, pretty much you've already, you just did a, a trial close. You yeah. got the answer you wanted. Just don't stick your foot in the mouth. Yeah, absolutely you right. Know? And initially what we're doing here, when we look at the dates, uh, we've already done Goodyear. Uh, we've got Mesa coming up. Uh, we don't have Arrowhead on the schedule yet, but we will. Uh, we'll slip it in there. Yeah, and, and if you're at one of these offices and you can't make it, you can always just shoot over to the other office, mm -hmm. absolutely. the office meeting. Absolutely. And so really what we're doing here is is really an introduction. Uh, but to Todd's point, what we are going to do, uh, I'm working already with some of the corporate staff on uh, going out into the offices and doing workshops. So the workshop is going to be a lot more hands-on. It'll be customizing the customizable site. It'll be talking about the pre-listing process. I'm actually going to be doing a live uh, listing presentation with w some agent. Uh, we'll find a volunteer that has good objections, uh, some things like that. So you will actually see the, the customized portion. You'll see how to use it. You'll see the live process, um, uh, you know, really the way you would present a listing. And it's not just this presentation. But going into like an RPR, going through the CMA and, and how to really get that done. Yeah. And even with the grab to go, you can also just print off your, you know, cloud CMA or RPR, put it behind it. But I, I, I just want to make a recommendation. I mean, I mean, you know, you guys, Todd, Scott, and then and I know Rick, you know, our graphic our creative director, he's the one who makes all the magic happen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is really sharp looking. You deliver this. I mean, it really sets you apart above what a lot of agents are doing. If you've got an inkjet printer at home don't print this yeah okay it's not it's it's not going to look good so you either need a color laser printer at home or it's worth going to a kinko's office max and have it printed on nice paper yeah. um, mm -hmm. because because when you have something that looks this nice and you put it on bad paper or you use it on an inkjet um 
it, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Well, we now have color copiers in the offices. And so if, uh, there's a, a very inexpensive, I think it's like a fraction of the cost they charge you at Kinko's. Uh, but talk to your office manager, get set up and, and, and do that. It's uh, uh, You could print it on that. Uh, they do have DPI settings that are high enough, uh, full color, that uh, this will come out looking pretty sharp. Now, if you want special paper, which might brought up a great point you know when you put something in their hands and they feel it it's got to feel as good as it looks yeah. so you know you might have to go over to kelly's paper or a place like that buy some paper and bring it to the office stick it in the machine and then still print because what you're paying for when you do pay for a copy a color copy is you're paying for the for the toner you, you know and and for a little bit of maintenance on the machine that's the way it works yeah. but absolutely yeah. i actually did test this uh, printing it on some fancy paper i even got it from staples and it's you know it's like 25 bucks yeah, for like a ring cheap yeah. But I mean, it's it's good stuff. I the way I like to present this and the way I've been playing with it because it shows up great on a computer. But if you have a full size tablet, and when I say a full size tablet, like an iPad or or an iPad Pro, not like an iPad Mini, you know, or not your phone, not your cell phone. But it shows up great uh, in those formats. And uh, I've I've kind of tested it with my iPad Pro, and it, it the images just pop. It just looks amazing. So it really is a, a great. Uh, great presentation. I know we did kind of beta test this. I, I leaked it out to a couple agents that needed something on the go and the feedback that came back was just phenomenal. All right. And then I just, uh, I'll just kind of let you go here for a minute or two, but um, okay, this is, uh, this is a tool. Okay. This is not going to get you the listing. Correct. Okay. This is a tool. It makes you look good. It gets you in the door. It gives them, you know, we always say first impression is everything and, and, and it's a fact. I always love the saying that they always say you can't judge a book by its cover when I'm at the bookstore. Well, you can't judge the quality of the book by its cover, but I always go by the one that's got the prettiest book cover, right? <laughs> right? Exactly that, right. That's, yeah. that's how I select books. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And 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 so there, you, you still have to, this is just a tool to enhance your selling skills. Absolutely. Yeah. If, you know, if you had a hammer, that doesn't mean you're going to have a house. I mean, you actually have to put the work in and, and build it. So if you're prospecting, if you're lead generating every day, looking for those appointments, this will surely get you over the hump, especially for those folks that are tongue tied. All you have to do is get this in front of them and it's going to do, uh, it's going to lay the foundation because we know a lot of sellers make decisions based on emotion. And this is a very, uh, an emotional satisfying piece when people see it you know and again it, it's it's all about setting that expectation so you know this tool do, it actually does that for you so you don't have to be a rocket scientist but it puts things into a procedure that and that's what consumers say nar statistics said one of the reasons why a seller will hire you uh, is to help them stage the price to help the strategy of the price and to help them understand the selling process, mm -hmm. this is what this is. This does it. Absolutely right. And it also tells the seller that, that you, you've take the time to build quality marketing materials. And in their mind, you're going to have to build quality marketing materials to sell their house. Point. And yeah. I'm, I'm looking at a listing agent that comes in with this. And I'm like, okay, these, yeah. these people know how to they know how to market. They get it. It looks good. It's it, making me look good. It, yeah. It's amazing. I got to tell you, in, in, in my past, in my history, most of the presentations that I've gone on, people have always commented how well prepared I was. And the interesting thing was I wasn't really that well prepared. I just had the right tools that made it look as if I did. You'd be surprised how many people are pulling comps off MLS with the MLS sheets and showing up to listing presentations talking about puppy dogs and curtains. And let me tell you, that doesn't work. That dog, that dog won't hunt, right? You actually have to wow people. There's a lot of good agents in this in this Phoenix metro uh, area. Don't think for a second just because someone likes you, they're going to list with you. It's very competitive. You got to be on your game. All right, Scott, Todd, thank you both of you thank for you. your hard work on this. This is uh, this has been a long time coming, um, and uh, I know all of us up here at corporate are very proud to be able to roll out uh, something as. Uh, something with such a high level of quality to our agents to be able to use. Uh, and it's a, f a phenomenal tool. So um, don't wait till next week when you're about to go on a listing appointment to yeah. download and look at it for the first time. I mean, so today, tonight, uh, take it's a look at this. It's on the dashboard. It's on the dashboard. Right now. And, and spend hours just looking at it and making yourself familiar with it, thinking about what you might want to customize, you know, and then what kind of stuff that you might want to insert that talks about you personally or your team uh but this is a great foundational piece so appreciate you guys' hard work on it and uh but these are the dates that scott will be at the office meetings so um so you'll know what time your office meeting is generally ha held and where it's at 
Um, so if you want some more information and a chance to talk to Scott, these are the dates. Again, we're working on the Arrowhead office. But if you're at one of these offices and you can't make your office meeting, uh, but you can make it at another office, call them, find out what time their office meeting is, where their office meeting is, and and feel free uh, okay. to show up. So, uh, Bob, don't do that. What do you got for us? Wow. Is that me? Yeah, it is. It right? looks like you. And some got a West devil. USA cap on him, too, that guy mm -hmm. there. See? You can't see that, but I've got about six of those. I thought that on. was a Cardinals cap. <laughs> <laughs> I went out and did the uh, Arrowhead meeting yesterday, and there was about 50 folks standing around there, and uh, we had a great time out there. But one of the things as I left there – Rich Johnson came up to me, and here's his card, and he said, Bob, last time I asked you to rent out my timeshare, you did it. So I'll tell you about it. It's over here at Coronado Beach Resort, studio, uh, week 32, August 6th to August 13th, if you are interested in giving him a call. He's 602-980-3879. This is a fun guy to know, you know, because I uh, used to go to the the um, uh, s symphony and he, he was downstairs when they would drop that floor down and he'd be down there taking a break. And I'd go over the over the rail and say, hey, Rich, it's your broker, you know, <laughs> but he, he was always uh, always a fun guy. Oh, here's something that comes through, too. Uh, and I guess you guys are getting these, but don't answer them, I, I guess. Here's a confirmation uh, warning. You have an important message from Bank of America. Here it is right here. Uh, just don't, <laughs> don't answer these things. Failure to verify or confirm online banking account within 48 hours may result in further account closure. Great. Close it out if you want to, but I'm not answering your stupid email because they're just uh, laying there waiting for you <laughs> like alligators. One of the um, things that happened here, uh, this way, as a matter of fact, uh, last week here, uh, one of the guys called up and says he's got a listing, nice listing, but it's got two great big large dogs in it the owners are gone and they left somebody else in charge of the place while he sells it well it isn't working out because he doesn't keep the dogs in check and what can he do about this and i i guess you could just give up the listing he says i'd gladly give up the listing because we can't terrorize agents with these dogs and is there any information on that stuff yeah, there's, uh, there's some great information on Animal House Remodeling Impact, and this is from NAR. If anybody wants this, I think it's about 26 pages of, of who's going to buy a house uh, and the if animal's effect on selling a home and, and uh, the people that buy homes, do they want an animal? And a lot of them do. They did a, quite a quite a survey on this thing and if you want this i'm happy to give it to you just send me an email of course broker bob at centurylink.net and i'll get that out to you this is a great issue and then uh, this other fellow why uh, he has decided to give up that listing because of the dogs and perhaps with the proper counseling and some talking to the folks it might have turned out differently and he'd been able to sell it but he says he just doesn't want that problem another lady called me up and she says i i got a short appraisal she says i've never had that happen before what do you do well, <laughs> well you, you better take some action you got a short appraisal here and uh, see if the uh, buyers will pay full price have you checked into that yet no i haven't well, you need to see. Maybe they'll pay the full price. And maybe they want out of this uh, transaction and they've got five days to get out of it. But the, there is a way to go about appraisals. And one of the guys wrote up a, a great summary of what he does. And he says he's only one time he never got.
got his appraisal in recent years. And that's Paul Moore, and he's made it available for everybody if you want a copy of it. And I have it. I have it. And I believe all the managers have a copy of it. They may or may not. But certainly, again, I'm happy to send it to you and show you what to do. Because you need to take action, and you need to do it now. you got five days, so get her done. Oh, yeah, here, here's... Gal called me up. She says, what do I put on line 114 of the listing agreement? I says, I, I don't know. I'll take a look. <laughs> do, you, do you know that, that I've never taken a listing since I've worked at West USA in 28 years? But, but I do know what you need to do. And uh, actually, I... She she sent me her her copy, and I ran off a copy off of zip form, and it, it was a seven-page document, and she says, line 114, I looked at there, and line 114 is just some words. That's all it is. She says, no, there's a big box there. What do you put in there? I said, no, there's not a big box there. So we talked a little bit more. It, have you found that out, Todd? I'm not sure yet what it I well, didn't know. I was thinking maybe she had the EA instead of the ER, but what? what no, uh, that's that's what some people told me too. I'm too yeah. dumb to pick out an ER. No, she no, had, I met the, her, she had the ER from 2002. Yeah. Nope. Right now, if you go on your zip form, you're going to get some of you will get eight pages to a listing agreement, and some of you will get seven. I got seven. I asked my wife to go in the other room and copy one for me. She'd come back with eight pages. And so did this lady that sent me the document. She says, here it is, Bob. I'll send it to you. So I looked at it. It's eight pages. So we got two different things coming around. Why is that? Does anybody know? I called, and they all give me yada, yada, no answers. Then Dwayne Washkowiak said, well, perhaps you have to update the thing, uh, but Gosh. not really uh, an answer that I know of. So I don't know what the situation is. Can you get the eight-page one in there? Yeah, I guess it'll work. But the one that is the proper one is a seven-page listing agreement, EA or ER, either one. So you may see a difference in that. I just want you to know that it could happen to you. Seven pages is correct, it says. Well, here's a gal that got a contract last Friday, and she says there's no earnest money. Uh, in four days, I've got no earnest money. So what do you do in that case? Cure. Well, yeah, yeah. Cure. See, I listen, Bob. I've been listening to you over the years. But the thing is that most agents, well, I don't want to make somebody mad. Well, it isn't your place to worry about making somebody mad. You're the agent acting for your client, and you need to do the cure because it's provided in there. If something doesn't happen, you send a cure notice over there. So I uh, told her to immediately, when she hangs up here, send a cure notice over there. Uh, and it may be one of those uh, uh, investors that's not going to put the earnest money in. And then at a certain point, he's going to walk and then he won't have to go to the title company to get his money back. Because sometimes they don't know how to get it back. So if they don't put it in, they don't have to worry about getting it back. So that that was uh, interesting, and we we talked about that uh, yesterday. And and uh, another, and it keeps coming up the the refrigerator that is in the MLS, and I've talked about it before. Which refrigerator is it that's in the MLS? Which one are you going to get? You're going to get one because you you go up here on the form and you you check off refrigerator line fifty six. So if you, you, what is this one? Uh, yeah, this is yeah refrigerator, line 56, and description. Nobody puts a description in there. They just put the little X. 
because it said so in the MLS that it would be the uh, stainless steel one. And, and, a, and a legitimate description shouldn't be the, the white fridge with a dozen eggs and a case of beer in it. Does that describe it? No, that, that won't do it. Nobody <laughs> has eggs in a refrigerator. Um, but but you've, got, you've got to go in there, open up the refrigerator. And I opened up my own at home and took a picture uh, of right inside. There's a big, uh, well, I, I, it, the, everything is right there in a very, like uh, the space of two business cards, maybe. You can get everything in a picture. Then could you send that over in, with a contract as an addendum? All the pictures, I suppose you could. These are the ones that we want. So they understand that because this one fellow, they took the stainless steel one out in the garage when he went to do an inspection. It's out in the garage. He says, well, what are they doing with that, Bob? I said, I don't know. Maybe they're stealing it or something. I, I don't know. But you need to address the situation now before we have a closing. Get it, get it going and get something done on it right away. But he says it said in the MLS, and I said, never mind the MLS. That isn't where it's at. And then somebody else uh, took off with a uh, wine cooler and a microwave. Why'd they do that? They said, well, that was just in there uh, just to make the place look better while we sold it. It was never meant to go. So there's another spot. If you've got personal property that seems personal, uh, why don't you write it down? It says line 6162, other personal property not otherwise addressed, description of it, and make sure that you get that property. It's in the contract that way. Otherwise, you may be buying a wine cooler for somebody. That may happen. And we st we're still going with that argument, so I don't know where that's going to go, but hopefully we get it done. And, and another one that happened over a month ago, last month, selling furniture. $500 worth of furniture. I got another email on that yesterday, and, and of course it was, you know, a yard long over this $500 piece of furniture. Uh, that stuff, don't sell furniture, sell houses. <laughs> Let the buyer and seller sell furniture to each other. They can do that, not a problem. Um, let's see. Um, oh, the armless change form. I, I get this probably a couple times a week. Sold change form. I say, well, go into zip form and get it. And then they call me back later. Well, there's nothing there. That's because they won't use the two libraries that are available to them. Uh, so then we have to go through this again and talk about it in the armless change form. It's right there for you. All right. Thanks, Bob. As usual, uh, find uh, find your office page, uh, like it, get involved and get uh, engaged in the group. A lot of great information uh, that each of these groups are providing one another as agents and um, also keep you up to date on what events are coming up. I leave you with the quote of the day. Todd will appreciate this. The great Wade Boggs. A positive attitude causes a chain reaction of positive thoughts, events and outcomes. It is a catalyst, and it sparks extraordinary reserves. So let that sink in for a while, and appreciate you joining us this morning. And as always, go out and sell a home.